Hey folks, man, this is Monk, and we are back with another episode of Class of Cinematics, and I'm joined as always with my co-hosts, we got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo! Yeah, folks, and today we've got a really fun and interesting film, and we're talking about Hoodlum from 1997. This film is directed by Bill Duke, mm. and in this story, having just been released from jail, Bumpy Johnson returns to his criminal ways as a linchpin of the African-American run numbers racket in Harlem. However, Bumpy's longtime friend, Illinois, and girlfriend are both eager to get him back on the straight and narrow. But a brewing rivalry with Mafia boss Lucky Luciano and his henchman Dutch Schultz threatens to rise the stakes to a dangerous new levels. And this is loosely based on historical facts, man. This yeah. is a depression era um, that this takes place. And we're looking at a power struggle between Dutch Schultz and Lucky Luciano with Harlem thrown into the middle. You know well, what I'm saying? So there's some interesting stuff going there, on here. There is. And, you know, just to your point, this is loosely based on, on true events. But when it's, when this movie came out, it got crapped on by the critics because they, they were saying that it was historically inaccurate. The thing about that, my problem, biggest problem is that, you know, if you want historical accuracy, watch a documentary or read, yeah. read some books yeah. on, on said material. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This movie is it's gritty, it's raw, it's violent, but most of all, it's entertaining. You never mm -hmm. lose sight that you're watching a movie. So, you know, it just, it baffles me how, you know, certain yeah. certain films and, or, or certain people that, that critique these films, they will bash these stories mm -hmm. for not being a play-by-play. -play. Yeah. But that's, it, that's not what you watch movies for. You, 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 yeah. There are other avenues to take. So, and, and there's plenty of films that are highly acclaimed that have taken literally liberties with historical events over the years man yes. and like you said i think the overall things got to be taken into account because this is an entertaining story i think it's well acted it's funny at times it has yes. some some quiet poignant moments and yeah you know i mean it, and you know and and like like you said what i do like about it what what really sets the tone for me is with this being set in 1934 at the height of the depression mm -hmm. and you know, with it revolving around the the numbers running racket, you know what I'm saying? That that's pretty much like that was as important uh, to you know to you know illegal profiting as selling dope in the 80s or 90s. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That yeah. that's just it, that's what it was. But you know what it did was you know if you were playing the numbers, it gave you a sense of hope, an opportunity to maybe hit a number, get some extra bread, and put food on the table. But if you were running the numbers, yeah. you were balling. And traditionally, this thing is done really without very little violence. You know, there there's some bickering going on between the crews, but most of that can be worked out. So I think the interesting aspect that we have with this story is actually um, Dutch Schultz, played by Tim Roth, and the way he comes in with the goon hand and brings all this violence to the situation. Yes. You know, typically... The, their disagreements would have been settled out with diplomacy and arrangements, but he just brings in the violence, you know, and that, and that kind of what turns this whole thing, you know, absolutely and it puts it all into action. And, you know? and the thing of it is, is that you know, up until this point in Harlem, Madam Queen, um, she was played by uh, C was it Sissy Cicely Tyson, um, she ran her racket yeah. with the driving force being respect. You know, what I'm saying she 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 treated her workers like family, and you know. The, the respect for the community that, that she had for them, they had for her, vice versa. Like you said, it wasn't it wasn't violent. Let's get to these characters, man, because I think that's where the meat of this thing comes in, man. Because, um, you know, it is what it is, man. It's a, it's a, it's a historical, you know, to take the liberties. I would say historical-based drama fiction kind of thing. But we got some pretty cool cast members. Um, Larry Fishburne plays uh, Lawrence Fishburne. My bad, dog. Um, <laughs> he plays Bumpy Johnson in this film. Who is our main character in this? And, and, and I love this portrayal man like he's definitely a guy like we meet him he's getting out of prison we don't know why but it definitely is some gangster stuff mm -hmm. you know but i also like his portrayal man he's a guy that's he's fair but he's also you know he's capable of getting to the action when, when it's necessary it, you know it, so and that's cool man. you know the cool thing is that he has as a lead role, he has such a commanding presence on mm. the screen. And like, you know, with, with this, this is a widespread cast and, you know, but he, like, he handles it almost like a quarterback feeding, feeding everybody, but they're all, you know, mm -hmm. going for the touchdowns, you know what I'm saying? But he is, yeah. he's definitely controlling the, the flow and the momentum of, you know, what's going on with this cast because, you know, this story is being told through the eyes of these, of these yeah, characters. Yeah, he's, he feel, he'll feel, he's written like the leader and he feels like the leader Absolutely. in his performance. Um, you know, like I say, he's fair. 
you know, but, you know, when push comes to sub, but also he has compassion at times. And yes. I think that's why he chooses to get involved because when, the, you know, just the, the introduction, when he steps off the train after getting out of prison, he's seeing the state of yeah. the streets. You know, a woman comes up begging, you know, for change. He sees a guy like a drunk guy at the bottom of the steps. So like, like this film I think it's heavy headed handed when it presents that kind of stuff. But at the same time, man, I love filmmaking that gets to the point. Yes. And it's getting to the point and it's letting us know what it is, man. I don't and think that should be a knock. It runs about two hours long. So for the first hour, we see him as, you know, as a as a solid soldier, you mm-hmm. know, what he's capable of doing as a soldier. But then, you know, about halfway through the film, there's a changing of the guard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some 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 uh pretty much Dutch is just tired of the back and forth in that's going on between uh, his, his him and his crew and the queen and her crew. Mm-hmm. So he wants to get rid of her. So, he, you know, he, he has a cop on the payroll, gets her jammed up, thinks problems are solved. But what ends up happening is now the torch gets passed to, to Bumpy Johnson. And mm-hmm. once he becomes the man and he has no one to answer to where he's making the rules... It's a complete tonal shift, not only in his character, but in this film as a whole. Like, yeah. I mean, they, soon when he's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm running, I'm running the show. The queen gave me the green light. Next thing that happens in this film is just a bunch of newspaper articles and Tommy guns being fired off. Like, I mean, there's, there's bodies dropping like flies. Mm-hmm. And then it, one of the coolest scenes for me personally in this film. Is then like you see the transition in him, like when when he's when he's walking up the street with the gun, and then he's got his car driving slowly behind him. It's like you know, like I said, that that presence is is solid. But then also, <clears throat> what I like is that as much as Bumpy Johnson is a likable character in this movie, Tim Roth as Dutch Schultz is despisable. Like mm-hmm. he is very easy to hate. <laughs> he is he is. There is no question that he is the villain. Like when he talks, it makes you want to cringe. Like mm-hmm. just watching what he does. Um, and I mean, it, you know, for all intents and purposes, that's you know, that's that's good acting because you know, he 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 commanded his role the way that he he was supposed to. But in this film, he's man, a good I, villain. I didn't man. like him. He's a good villain. <laughs> I mean, and you see, like I said, man, like this, like I said uh, earlier. These things are typically settled with diplomacy. It's easier. You keep yes. the violence down. You keep the um, drama down. That keeps the police away. So Dutch, by doing things in his manner, is making everything hot, man. And and and, and it's something that the 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 other gangsters don't want to deal with. It's interesting because, um, luckily, Giano, played by um, Andy Garcia, who's pretty solid here. Yeah. You know, later on, reaches out to. Um, Bumpy, it's like, bro, like we can't deal with this. This is not good for us. And, and, and reaches it around, and, and you know, it's just kind of cool, man. Shout out to Cicely Tyson, who plays the queen. I think she does a great role of uh, uh, job here. And it's interesting to see in a film like this because I don't think I've ever seen a woman um, gangster uh, boss depicted really in the film at this level before not, this not at this time you know no. maybe yeah. i think there was a character in the sopranos that that you know popped up but that would be i think later that was probably like 98 when yeah. that happened mm-hmm. you know there was a boss in one of them shows but it's cool to see her represented and this is like like i said this thing is based on real life characters they take some liberties with the storytelling and the characterization but madam queen was a real person in the Harlem that, that was you know running stuff and it's cool I like how she prioritizes even though Dutch is escalating and making things worse she prioritizes the people man I think that's where her and Bumpy have a conflict and I appreciate this conflict because she does have a point it's like to, to when things get heated it's almost as if Bumpy is looking at some of this stuff is they're just soldiers they're they're, they're fodder yeah. she's treat he's treating them like that and she's like yo especially when tanichi dies it's like yo these are our guys as soldiers but yeah. but we want to avoid them dying exactly. you know we have to use them they are our pawns and stuff yeah. but we don't want to give up even the pawns you know in this right. stuff and, and you know what you know what i really like also is like whenever there is illegal profiting there is a mob element even though the major focus is on what's going on with the numbers in harlem and we get that through and through this film but with Andy Garcia playing Lucky Luciano he 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 brings that 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 mob element in that that how they are going to have their hand in every pie that is making illegal mm-hmm. profits. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and he is even getting fed up with Dutch Schultz antics. Mm-hmm. You know and but I mean? also, we're looking at a time in historical events where the FBI is coming into it. And mm-hmm. you've got J. Edgar Hoover, who mm-hmm. was an animal. 
and one of his initiative initiatives, like they, they kind of made him famous, was going after organized crime. And yeah. and it's interesting. They mentioned Hoover in this film. Um, I think Garcia's character does, and he knows it's coming. So it's yeah. like, so his thing is like, we've got to be, you know, even though I got my hands and everything, we've got to be operating at a discreet level as yes. possible. Yes. You know, because even like Lucky's no better than Dutch. No. But he, he wants some of this Harlem money too. Yes. But he's also willing to be diplomatic about it. You, you know? have to be. You know, you he's know, not he's not just gonna, you know, force it. He's not strong yes. arming him, you yes. know. <laughs> nobody nobody likes a bully. Yeah, At the end yeah. of the day, some you, you, you take <laughs> out you take you take out people by force. Somebody's gonna end up taking you out. Yeah, just yeah. Bu- bullying. Speaking just, speaking of bullies, I love Clarence Williams. I was the third. Just about to bring him <laughs> up, dog. Yes, he plays. Yes. Uh, he plays Bub Hewlett, uh, who is Dutch's right hand man enforcer, and and the, my favorite scene. One of my favorite scenes is the beginning when when Bubby's getting off the train and he runs into this guy randomly, yes. which is goofy. But we let it ride because it's so good. <laughs> and he's beating down these guys who have a, a numbers front. One of the little the spots. beating the snot out of a woman. <laughs> yeah. Like, y'all was like, oh my God, dude, ease up on her, man. He said, you don't write policy in Harlem. Yeah. I guess that's what they call the, the gambling the, the, slips. The numbers, yeah. The policies. Yeah. See, Dutch writes policy and eat, man. <laughs> but he's so good throughout this entire yes. thing, and, man. And you know, and one thing I really like about his character <laughs> as well is that they never really explain to us what happened. Like, why is he and his crew working for Dutch? Like, at some point, some Somewhere along the lines, Dutch got him in his pocket because the only thing that that we are told is later on, later on in the film, Bumpy Johnson tells him he's like, man, before I went in into the joint, you were running Harlem. Mm-hmm. It was you and then the Queen, and everybody was eating peacefully. He was like, I come out, and now you're 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 Dutch Schultz underling, like you know what I'm saying. And and he mm-hmm. treat, Dutch treats him like trash. It's like he he just he just the things that he does and says to him is just like constant belittlement and everything. But yeah, but this dude, it's, it's, <laughs> this dude is yeah, he is a warrior through I mean, and through. My, my thing is he he's he's one of these classic warrior for higher higher um, types. Yeah. If you, you you're paying his bills, he's gonna be loyal to you. But yeah. at the same time, I think what's cool about his character is as the film goes throughout, he, you know, it's almost like I'm, I'm standing next to this guy. He's paying my bills, but I know he's a piece of shit. And yes. by, by the time we get to the end of the film, there's certain things that even is too much for him. Like, like, yes. and I, and I, and I kind of like that dynamic. There's, there's the point where after, um, going to get it to, um, Illinois after, after they, after they take out, um, Illinois and, and it's like, and, and um and Bumpy runs up on him and Bumpy's yeah. about to take him out and he's yeah. like and he's like did you touch my family yeah. did you put and he's like no he he's like I was family. there yes. but but it's also interesting too because Bumpy knows what it is he's not taking it personal because Bumpy used to be one of these guys yes. that's how he came up and got to his position he and used to be the guy for hire, the gun yes. for hire and dude you know? it is <laughs> chilling with, it's, it's, with, it's, it's with Bumpy's great, response man. like uh, like Bumpy's like how you sleep at night old man he's like how do you know I sleep at yeah. all I was, I was like, like good because <laughs> They, because they're, they're the same guy, yes. and, and I and I think that's what the critics miss, man. For yes. me, who I, I, I pride myself in seeing through a lot of the bullshit. I watch a lot of the movies. Yes, I know what's what. Like, like it's I'm not saying my point of view is the ultimate, but it's like, come on, son, you can't you can't look at that development in those beats. Maybe it's not dressed up how you want it dressed up, but it's there, and I think yes. that's a brilliant. Like, like to me, that's where the heart of this film is. Like, the brilliant characterization you could criti- critique some of the acting at times and some of the choices but this is a really well-made film if yeah. you ask me bro and, like, you know, like, speaking, like speaking of good acting <laughs> like you said uh, what we get from shy mcbride as illinois gordon <laughs> yeah oh awesome. my god i like, love this guy he, man. Is, he is bumpy's right hand man yeah. he's with him through and through through the good times the bad times um when he first gets out of jail you know like if it wasn't for illinois like really kind of helping Bumpy get back on his mm-hmm. feet. Who knows if Bumpy would have even transitioned to the powerhouse that he became. He you is know? my favorite character here overall, I think. And um, just the comic relief, the warmness, the over... He's a guy you feel like... Like, I know guys like this yes. in real life. I've encountered people like this, you know, since childhood and up that just have this warm, 
welcoming their larger than life personality. Yes. They, they, like no matter what's going on, they try to find the good side of it. And like he, and, I, I love this guy, know, man. You know, in this what, film, bro. what really works for his character too is because he brings all of that. He brings this emotional compass. But then as the film goes on, you see the effect of what's being done and how you know Bumpy's running the show. How it's really affecting yeah. him for the for the worse. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like he he he. It's almost like he lost his spark. Like he, he I feel does. like he's. In a, in a way, a representation of Harlem in this film. Yes, like like the, the his reactions is also how the community is reacting to all of this violence and chaos that's been stirred up because of these situations. Yes, because you know? he even he even tells Bumpy. He said, "Man, in the past six months, I seen more bodies drop in Harlem mm-hmm. than I've seen in my whole life." Yeah, like it's like that's that's the thing. Like like Bumpy is he's ruling with an iron fist. Yeah, he, yeah. You know what I'm saying you no. Know, and and it's just it, it is having having its effect, but in, really, in a way, in 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 in, in fighting Dutch, Dutch, he's becoming a lot it, like Dutch in a lot of ways, you know. Yes, and that's he's why dragging him into his, the mud, you his, know. His girlfriend slash wife, I don't know if they got married or not, played by uh, Vanessa Williams. Mm-hmm. Uh, her name was Francine, and um, she actually ends up leaving. Bumpy yeah. because of it. Like I mean, at first, like like she, she says, I mean, you know, when I first oh met you, God. you were writing poetry, you were charming, and you know, and and and, and even though she knew, um, poor what, Francine, what he was doing, she she, yeah, I, I, you know what it is? It's like you're you're trying to um, you 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 you, you get in uh, business with the devil. What do you expect is going to happen? And you know, what is, is that, it's just like it's it's going to come out eventually. Yes, and not you know, and not just and, in, in order. This. Yeah, in order to be with a man like this, you got to overlook a lot of things and tolerate a lot of things. You yes, know? and not just in this film, but in life. You know, people have to understand one thing that you cannot change people at their core. People can change and make adjustments mm-hmm. on a smaller scale, um, be accommodating mm-hmm. on certain mm-hmm. levels, but you cannot change them at their core. Core. and you know once she realized that enough was enough and mm-hmm. she had she had to leave she was like you are you are becoming the man that you despise you know what i'm saying what what because it, it got to the point where you know so much blood is being shed that in so many so many deaths everybody's losing people close to them that what what are, what are we really gaining if everybody's losing you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. yeah it, it's, it's really great man i love the 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 moral dichotomy of what this yeah, thing brings to the table. And things, things it's, really, it's fun, man. It's just, it's not black and white, man. You know? It's not. It's not. Um, th- sh- shout out to, um, um, oh, what was you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, um, uh, and pretty much things took uh, took a turn for the worse for Illinois once uh, they killed um, Bigfoot. Yeah, I love Loretta, Loretta Devine, Devine in this, she man. She was awesome. She's so good. She was you, another one. Full you, of you know what? I've been watching her lately in, um, in uh, P-Valley. <laughs> she, she plays the mom of one of the characters. And it's Fun watching her and that because she's kind of just don't she's just there but she can do whatever the want she wants but but looking at her and Chima Bride in this I think they were in a show together back in the day called Boston Public about mm-hmm. school teachers that I enjoyed a real lot but but their chemistry is so great mm-hmm. here man and she she's awesome man I, I love their banter and all that they they really give you some warm moments in the midst of all this dark energy that's going around yes. you know. <laughs> I no, I also it. thought it was cool when we got um it was it, it was the um it was the Ice Pick brothers. They were actually played by real brothers, uh Bale Star and Mike Star. You would know Mike Star. He was um also the gas man from Dumb and Dumber. He was mm-hmm. in um a few other films, the the, the more heavy set one. Yeah. Just that small clip that you get of them like they I love their banter. They're like just going back and forth mm-hmm. like like yeah. oh, best best cheese steak. So <laughs> oh, so yeah, so that was kind best of cool. pie, best That's the Royale with cheese. Yeah, kind of exactly. <laughs> and then, and the only thing that they agreed <laughs> on was when they were like best frankfurter. They both said Nathan's cuz Nathan's yeah. hot dogs are they're the shit. Yeah, but, yeah, but that, that but that comes back to um, you know, um Francine's character because that they, their scene involves her when they um, go to Bumpy's house and yes. try to take him out. But but her naivety is is thinking that that she could live one foot in, one foot out. Yes. And it's like yo, this is a prime example of that. Like I, I think yo, it this reminds me of Scarface, man. I look at Scarface, yeah. I'm like, by all intents and purposes, Scarface should have been the next Sosa. And and yeah. and, and I say that because. Scarface should have had no problem taking out that kid, you know, those blowing up that car. Because, you know, it's messed up to, to say it, like, but, but hear me out. At one point, Scarface chose, like, you can't have one fit and one foot out. If yeah. you're all in, you're this tough gangster guy, or you're not. 
And once he hesitated and left that opening and he messed up and then yeah. now now you got to go because Sosa now you owe a debt to him and, and I think that's what comes into play with this film Bumpy is trying to have one foot in one foot out he's trying to have this civilian happy family life with, with this woman uh, mm-hmm. with Francine mm-hmm. but also be the, the gangster boss at the yep. same time and well, it doesn't work and that's, that's the thing like when you choose this lifestyle you don't get to pick and choose when you want to put your moral compass mm-hmm. at work yeah. you know what I'm saying it's yeah. like it's that is something that is going to slowly just fade away the more dirt you do your morality is going to go away with that you know what mm-hmm. I mean like it's just uh, like you said it just it just doesn't work you know but um also uh, I like that we got a little spot check from Queen Latifah um, this I think this was one of the, the first movies that I saw her in where she kind of had a, a a bigger a bigger role. This came out. Did this come uh, out? Who was that? Queen Latifah. This oh one. yeah. Not nah, well. See, she did not. It was a kind of a cameo. I feel like in this um, ninety seven though. But um, now nah, she had done some stuff before. But mm-hmm. I don't think this was the big big role. This wasn't like this I think. Was I think set it off. Right. I think. Yeah. I yeah. think. Hold up. Yeah. I gotta look that up. Because um, set it off might have been around the same. Because I know she had the little spot check in Juice as well, and then also you know what set it off was before this. So so oh, wow. so, 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 yeah, so yeah. So so it was just kind of like. Showing but but it's hard up. to say because I with movies just because they got released a certain time doesn't mean they were made like like maybe mm-hmm. set it off was filmed before this or maybe this was filmed before right, set it right. off and you know just the release schedule because she also had that cameo on jungle fever and there was other stuff but then later on she would do the thing with um the steve martin film the taxi and, and you know but but she was on her way she has a pretty cool cameo yeah. it was cool seeing her in that scene um, but but yeah, the characters are so great in this. I think that's why I love this film. Um, you know, shout out to the other, uh, you know, people in this. Like I said, we also got um, yeah, we got Chi McBride. But then also like when we get uh, Valley Valley <laughs> John yeah. told his babe, which is a, which is an interesting scene because Valley's there the whole time. But but yeah. I love this part because it in this illustrates how dangerous it's gotten there. Basically, Schultz is doing whatever he can to get to um, um, get the bumpy, whether it's outright trying to gun him down in the streets yeah. or doing more discreet uh, <laughs> measures such as food poisoning. And man, that, that food poisoning yeah. scene is great. You yeah. don't like almonds on his split. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It, it, it's, it, it's ridiculous in hindsight because I'm like, yo, how did you know rat poison was on your banana split other than the fact that the split was prepared differently it's it's a fun scene but but <laughs> you could you could pick at it and be like man this is ridiculous but that's kind of why i like the movies man yes, i want to see exactly. ridiculous stuff outside things that probably wouldn't happen in real life i want to see that you yes. know and it's a cool scene because i like how how um the um basically um bumpy johnson deduces that his um banana split has been poisoned. <laughs> <That's> poison. <laughs> so then the, because of the almonds <laughs> and the new guy, they're blaming it on the new yes, guy. So yep. all, and it's funny because uh, Valley, played by John um, Tolas Bay, he's like, "Let me do him, bump it." Yeah. Like, like what's the, <laughs> But but meanwhile, Valley has was the one that hired the new guy to poison the banana split in the first place. I love this That's man like because shut him up. The, the ice cream shop owner is just like. Look, man, it ain't me. <laughs> All I do is serve the ice cream, man. It's, it's great. I love, man, yeah. I don't understand how you can't love this like, yeah. like this movie. And then, you know, oh um, another another character that I love on the Enforcer tip, I love what we get from Paul Benjamin as Whispers. Yes, like, yes. He is Whispers, a, man. Like, he yeah. is silent mm-hmm. but deadly, man. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think it's really cool. You know, you, you can tell that, <laughs> that he like, got his name because you know, he's got the slash across his throat, so he probably got his um, the windpipe mm-hmm. or, or mess up his voice Maybe box. Like, like emphysema way. surgery or something, something. But, <laughs> but, you know for a man that says very yeah. few words man his presence is felt as well he's quick yeah. quick quick to pull out the gun he's always got bumpy's back mm-hmm. and anytime something goes on you know bumpy calls for for whispers yeah. when he needs that that dirty work to be done yeah, yeah. Know, he was he, there with him in the streets too when that when they when they ambushed the queen at the opera yes um, he was. i do want to point out for folks man he's also in a, a few uh dirty hairy joints at least one, and he also um, has a big role in Across 110th Street. He was one of the guys that stole the money from the mob. You know, that's the first thing I remember seeing him in. But but yeah, really great actor, man. Really cool seeing him in this. Yeah, man. Was he in Harlem Nights? Or I want to say I, I, nah, I, nah, I, I might have seen him, but yeah. I don't know. Um, 
And yeah, man, I mean, and just putting this 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 cast together, I mean, you had five Oscar nominees in yeah. this cast. I mean, you <laughs> know, crazy. I think Bill Duke, as, as a director, did a great mm-hmm. job just assembling the right personnel for to for, for this movie. I mean, it, it just, it plays well. It feels, you know, even if it's not, you know, accurate for what happened, that's, that's irrelevant because it feels... You know, it feels yeah, good and authentic. I will overlook all of that, which yeah. I do. If you give me a really great experience, yes. and I think Hoodlum gives us a great yes. experience, and, and for for what for what is being portrayed, <laughs> and delivered on screen, and you know, another thing that that I really appreciate is the set design. Like mm-hmm. we feel like we're in the thirties, yeah. and yeah. you know, with with the with the costume, with the dress, the Tommy guns, they out there street sweeping the cars. Fit the yeah. part, but also what what really works for this me. This is a dope period piece, man. They re, they recreated that era yeah, really well, and, and, and it's it's because of the layout. You know these these building designs, these streets, everything mm-hmm. looks different, and it's wild because it was actually shot in Chicago. What? Because but that makes sense though. Because it? Chicago see, still has yeah. those 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 styles of buildings and stuff. Whereas in New York, you know they obviously switched it up. But you know it it really yeah. it fits the bill. It just it gives us. Everything that we're looking for 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 a period piece mm-hmm. time and in uh, an era that that this film is uh, is presenting for us, man. Yeah, yeah, really, really dope setting, man. You you feel it feels like that era, man. Like you said, the the cars, the outfits, man, costume design is really great. <laughs> it almost had like if I was thinking about it I, I, last minute, I, it came to mind. I was like, man, we should get suits and get the little hats yeah, and do this. Cool. <laughs> maybe maybe yeah. in the future, man, I'll be more conscious of that uh-huh. and we get. We can all cook it up for y'all, man. But but yeah, man, I really love this thing, man. It, this it, like rewatching it just reminded me just of how good this was, man. And yeah. it, it's one of these films, you know. I know The Godfather gets mentioned and all this stuff, and 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 in a lot of ways, you know, those films, you know, the, the stuff Scorsese's done are more well done. You know what I'm saying? I mm-hmm. feel like they, you know, just a higher production value. But I think the heart of this thing is what resonates for me man yes. it's, it's just really great man it holds it down yes and also i mean for you know i like to see when you know actors turn directors when they can you know give us good product you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying it doesn't always happen that way but i mean when you look at some of the other films that bill duke directed he directed a rage up in harlem and also deep cover so yeah which, he, he's competent man you know, as a director yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of like that you know that that player turn coach yeah. mentality and you know, <laughs> so he and he actually he it, it, like I said, for this, I love my rewatches. I love the I love the movie when I first mm-hmm. saw it, and all of my rewatches were really enjoyable because it just it takes you and puts you right in the place that you're supposed to be with the like I said with the setting and then and the characters. It's like you feel like you're 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 at the table with these guys, mm-hmm. like you're, and, and they're just telling you their their story of what was going on in their day to day lives. Yeah, man. Yeah, this is, um, you know, the music also I think is really dope for the era. There's a jazzy kind of orchestral soundtrack going, mm-hmm. going with it most of all. But they also released a soundtrack, you know, with a lot of interesting songs on this, man. They got, yeah. um, they got, um, you know, Mob Deep, Rakim, Raekwon, Faith Evans, um, you know, other Wu Tang, uh, people. We also got, uh, Big Boy from Outkast, Cool Breeze, Erka Badu has a song right here, Chico the Barge, mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah, really, uh, really cool, man. You know what I'm saying? Makes me want to go. I might spin this, man, later on yeah. today. But I got some time, but but overall, man, I love this dang movie, bro. Yeah. Like, I can't. I don't. I have nothing bad to say about it. I say, if you haven't seen it, go watch this now. I, I feel like most of y'all that are watching the art show have seen these films before, mm-hmm. but by the slim chance that you haven't, go check this out ASAP, man. I'm not sure what it's available on oh, right now. Oh, it's available on Tubi. Oh, okay, for yeah. free ski. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> do yourself a favor. You don't even need to have a Tubi account. Just, mm-hmm. you know, just go on Tubi and, and, and check it out, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. that's that's one of my go-tos, especially yeah. when it comes Pluto to... Yeah, Pluto TV also has it. I'm showing it on um, Amazon Prime Video, yeah. and it says... Um, YouTube, uh, yeah, never mind, never mind, but yeah, yeah, yeah but you I got mean, ways you can watch yeah. it for free now, you know. That's that's the and, and one thing I'll say about Tubi, I'm not I'm not an advocate for them. They don't pay me no promotion or nothing, but it's a good place to go for older films. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying because yeah. what they do is they they get the films that are free domain, mm-hmm. and that's how they can they can provide you know free streaming and everything. Yeah, and, and also uh, Amazon Prime Video, man, they're awesome with that too with yeah. the uh, pre the old you know old film stuff, man. So. Mm-hmm. But yeah, definitely go check this out, man. And maybe it might inspire you. 
to dig deeper into the real history of this era, which was an interesting time, yeah. man. Like I said, I remember seeing um um a guy, Pee Wee Kirkland, who was crazy, man. Crazy guy that, that could have went to the NBA before the NBA was getting any money, mm-hmm. and he chose the streets instead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and one of the things he said, I think he was a Harlem guy or uptown guy, as they say, and he was saying one of the things about you know the uh, when the Italians came into play or came into the 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 street crime game is like they brought a lot of the violence, man, and and he didn't understand that. But this is almost like the Dutch Schultz effect. Just because of dealing with him, you gotta react like him. In his opinion, it messed the game up because how are you going to you know get debts repaid if 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 you kill the guy that owes you money? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It. And it's just it didn't make any sense to him. But that's how people did business, you know. You know, at least you know the Italians brought that to the game, you know, to mm-hmm. the to the gangster culture, and they kind of he said it kind of messed it up in a lot of ways, man. It made things more dangerous and made the stakes higher than they had to be, and you know. Dutch Schultz's real name is Arthur Flegenheimer. <laughs> was that really the real life real that's name? That's what his name is in this movie. <laughs> I don't know if that's historically accurate or not, but yeah. that's, that's funny mm-hmm. as shit to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, interesting, man. And if you're looking for similar stuff like, like this, man, I definitely recommend Harlem Nights. Um, a Rage in Harlem is also another underrated great film. Also we'll probably get to that. Duke. Oh, we'll get to that one day, mm-hmm. man. But and things like, man, there's some cool stuff about this era, man. I think it's underlooked because at least the the black side of it is underlooked, you know, because it's harder to get those films made. But there are some gems out there, you know? Yes. And this, uh, like I said, it, 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 it really, really hits heavy with the aesthetic. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Which, what, you're, what, you're, what you're seeing visually on screen is just, it's a well-oiled machine. Yeah. Put it that way. But I think that's it, folks, man. We're going to get out of here. And we're going to catch y'all next time, man. This has been another episode of Classes of Cinematics. Make sure you click below. You know what I'm saying? Check out the merch. <laughs> Try to support us that way. Subscribe, man. Like this. Share it with your friends and family. And we'll be back for more. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, folks. We out of here, man. Peace. Oh. Really?